Well, Ross's most productive season came in 2009 with the Marlins when he had 24 home runs, drove in 90 runs. He became a Giants hero during their run to the World Series thanks to his knack for the clutch, both in the NLDS and in the NLCS. Well, knack for the clutch for us, Nick Gaffardo and Pete Abraham of the Boston Globe. We welcome in to Red Sox Hot Stove Live. And uh, Pete, I'll start with you. If this is indeed true, that Cody Ross coming to the Red Sox. Well, I, I think it is true. And talking to people with the Red Sox, they're very close to finalizing the agreement. And Ross went on Twitter last night and basically announced uh, his happiness with the, with the Red Sox nation. He's looking forward to meeting everybody. And I think it's an interesting move for the Sox because this is a guy who really hits left-handed pitching well. He's got a 282 career average, a 912 OPS against lefties. The Red Sox really needed a right-handed hitter in the outfield. Uh, I think this team was a little bit too left-handed last year, uh, despite as well as they did offensively. So this is a guy with Carl Crawford maybe not starting the season right away and with some questions in right field, I think who's going to fit this team pretty well. Are there still depth questions about the Red Sox outfield? Well, no, I don't think there are now. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, who is, uh, who, who's going to emerge out of this group, you know? Uh, and Cody Ross could, could be the guy. Obviously, he had his moment in the sun in, in 2010, but he has good right-handed power. He really does, and he should be a very effective player at Fenway Park, hit some fly balls or get over the wall. And uh, he's a good outfielder, obviously a center fielder. Uh, and I'm sure they'll use him in left at the start of the year or, or right, or either way. And, uh, but they got a good deal on this one. He was asking for the San Francisco Giants three years at $20 million when this thing started. So that for the Red Sox to get him at one year, $3 million with incentives or whatever is in there, uh, that's a good deal for this guy. Well, some news from this past week also. Marco Scudero was shipped off to the Colorado Rockies. And uh, your thoughts about that situation? It appears like it was a perhaps salary-type move for the Red Sox to then go get some other stuff with the money they save on Marco Scudero. Well, well as we know, the Red Sox can't have the same shortstop for more than a year and a half or so. That <laughs> seems to be the way it works. But it's a, it, it's a move, I think, financially uh, motivated, as you said, Don. You know, he's making $6 million next year. With, with the salary cap implications, it's about seven and a quarter million that will be taken off the books for the Sox. So they're going to they use a portion of that money for Cody Ross. I would imagine they're going to use a portion of that money again, whether it's for a pitcher now or a pitcher at some point during the season. Uh, they could save some of that money, you know, and maybe do something at the All-Star break. But it's definitely, I think, they were looking, when you look at that roster, not too many guys you can move for financial relief, but Scudero was one of them. Now, Nick, the question becomes on opening day, who is the shortstop for the Red Sox? <laughs> I, I just don't buy the Mike Avila's Nick Punto platoon. You know, uh, there's absolutely... No range. You have more range than those two guys <laughs> at shortstop. I, I'm telling you. You do. I've seen you. Um, so, uh, no, really. I mean, uh, so there's got to be another move of the shortstop, or they have to see how Iglesias does in spring training and, and hope that his offense has improved enough that he can kind of step in there right away early in the season. I just don't buy this platoon.